Hi guys, this is Andrew with Headphones.com. Welcome to The Headphone Show, and today I have somewhat of a different video for you guys. I'm going to do a bit of an overview, shootout, comparison between three different HE6 headphones, Hi-Fi Man HE6 headphones. These are all high-end, over-ear, planar magnetic headphones, and for anyone who doesn't know about the HE6, this is one of the headphones that put planar technology on the map in general. Uh, the HE6, HE500, and Odyssey LCD2, um, they definitely uh, kind of pioneered the way back in, you know, sometime in 2010, 2011. Um, and since then, we've had this technology, you know, in lots of different headphones and a lot of good ones. But in this video, I'm going to be kind of going back to the roots a little bit and comparing uh, these three headphones because as many of you guys know the original HE500 was near and dear to my heart and the HE6 is sort of like the bigger brother to that one so these are all high-end over your open back planar magnetic headphones and you can actually only buy two of them right now the original HE6 is unfortunately discontinued um, but the uh, HE6 SE V1 and V2 are still currently available so let's check them out <music> Now, as usual, a quick disclaimer here. I'm gonna let you know where all these are from. This unit here, the HE6 SEV1, was sent to me by Hi-Fi Man for evaluation. Big thanks to Hi-Fi Man for sending it along. Um, and the V2 here was sent by Android. Many of you guys know him. Shout out to Android for sending this along. Um, and I'll leave a link to Audio Discourse's website in the description as well. And then the original HE6 here was sent to me by Danda. He's a, a prominent community member. And of course, a big thanks to Danda for sending this in for evaluation. But yeah, anybody who sends in uh, you know, headphones for evaluation. You guys are all, you guys are all awesome. Of course, I've not been paid to say anything in particular about any of these and all thoughts and opinions are my own. All right, so let's get into these. Um, by the way, for anybody who's wondering, this HE6 is the six screw version. And I know there's a lot of question marks about, you know, the six screw versus the four screw and, you know, how they, how do they compare? Um, I'll also leave a link in the description to uh, a post that a guy's done, uh, System has done on the differences among them. And he does a very good rundown on that. Unfortunately, this is the only one that I have here to evaluate. So I can't tell you how the four screw version sounds or anything about that one. But if you are interested in that, there will be a resource there for you. In any case, let's get into the comparison here. And the first thing that I have to talk about is the big elephant in the room with the HE6 there's always that question mark of you know what are you using to power it can you are you driving it correctly are you driving it sufficiently with any of these HE6s there is going to be a question of synergy and what amplifier you're running with it and because of the narrative that's sort of a canonical hangover from when headphone amplifiers these lower end headphone amplifiers didn't have the kind of power that they have now the goalposts are always going to be shifting on these headphones and I have to say that Categorically, you do not need a speaker amplifier to run these headphones. Let me just say that flat out. I know there's a lot of people out there saying that, and I'm confident I'm going to get somebody in the comments saying that you need a speaker amplifier to run these headphones, but that is just false. It's just not true. Now, you may want to drive them with a speaker amplifier, but in the last, even the last few years, there have been so many amplifiers that have come out that are ridiculously powerful. And there are a number of manufacturers now who've produced amplifiers that can power this. And I'll give you an indication here. I ran all three of these off of the Kyan IHA-6, which was specifically made for this headphone, right? Um, I ran all three of them with no problem at low gain. And I know we're not talking just about volume here, but... Yeah, on, even on low gain with that amplifier, um, it was able to power these headphones. Now, speaking of the headphones, let's actually talk about them. So I want to begin by talking about the HE6 SEV1 here. And looking at the build and aesthetic and the comfort and all that stuff, I really, really do not like this headband for this headphone specifically. And the first reason is that there's no cup swivel here. Um, now, that wouldn't normally be a problem or as much of a problem, like for example, on the Sundara, because the Sundara is actually quite, uh, it's, it's actually quite a bit more uh, lightweight. And then the biggest problem here is that the pads, they don't have quite the same extreme angle uh, and they're not as like cushiony. So the clamp force on this is particularly aggressive. And that's probably my biggest complaint uh, with the uh, with the ergonomics and everything with the HE6 SEV1. Now, with that said, I have seen a number of photos out there of people modifying the headbands and sw swapping them out for other headbands, which is probably what I would do with this. You know, for me, I've got a larger head, and because of that, the clamp force on this is just way too intense. Now, looking at the uh, HE6 SEV2, which is an Adorama special special edition. 
this one actually was at one point, I think on sale for like 700 or $800 really ridiculous discount on this one. You know, as of recording this, I think it's back up to like $1,600, $1,700 or something like that. I know a lot of people jumped on this headphone um, back when it was on sale, and I think it'd be something to look out for again, uh, as we'll talk about with the sound quality. But this is so much more comfortable with this newer style headband. Um, again, it doesn't feel the most sturdy and robust for the headband, but it is so much better than um, this, uh, the older, the Sundara style headband. And um, so it's it's really quite comfortable, I find. And you know the weight isn't really a problem when the head when the clamp isn't so intense and when there's there's cup swivel, right? So overall, you can wear this for longer periods of time. Um, if anybody's wondering, uh, the grill looks a little different here, I think, because Android's done the grill mod, which you could in theory do on the SE V1 as well. Incidentally, I've done a bunch of pad swapping on these, and right now I have the Sundara pads on here, and I'll show you guys the measurements of all the different pads as well. And then lastly, the original HE6 is the, yeah, again, the more old school design with these uh, yoke, uh, the yoke structure here, having the pivot point actually on the yoke, um, not actually at the where the arm attaches to the headband, and uh, it does have some extension there as well. So this is the old school design, not particularly comfortable because it is also a little bit on the heavy side, but I actually think that the comfort here can be improved by swapping out the pads as well. Uh, these are just the default velour pads on here and they are very stiff. So when swapping out to the Sundara pads or the 400 SE pads or some of the other pads that I, uh, that I used with this, it actually became quite comfortable. And um, I even uh, took the ZMF pilot pad uh, which is sort of a headband padding system and uh, put it on here and it's one of the most comfortable headphones um, for long listening sessions that I've I've worn. You know back when I owned the HE500 my main complaint with it was the comfort. You know at the time I was in graduate school and I was you know constantly working away on stuff and I just found it was a bit distracting because of how heavy it was or how you know, it wasn't that comfortable and now after being able to evaluate this for longer you know, listening sessions with different pads and then that you know headband system I kind of am kicking myself thinking you know, I could have made that so much more comfortable, but lesson learned. In any case, uh, the winner for ergonomics, the build, the comfort, and all that stuff is the HE6 SEV2, um, followed closely by the HE, the original HE6, and then in last place uh, by a mile is the HE6 SEV1. Now, let's talk about how they all sound, and I'm going to begin with the HE6 SEV1. I'm going to throw the graphs up on the screen here for you guys to take a look at, but I got to state in no uncertain terms that the target is just a known data point. It's a known reference point. I do not base my evaluations strictly on adherence or deviation to a target. I think for whatever reason, people are still sort of confused by that, or maybe they skip past that part in my videos. This is just a well-established target to help guide us with evaluations. Things can deviate to a certain extent from this target, and there are places where it should deviate from this target. Um, so just keep that in mind. With the HE6 SE V1, however, the frequency response here is not to my liking in one particular area. Uh, and that's the distance between the mids and the upper mids. And actually they're all kind of similar in the sense that they do seem to have a little bit of a dip there at around like, you know, 2K, 1.5 to 2K. And that is a common trait with hi-fi man planers. Um, but the big problem here is that it's, the distance is just so much, uh, at least with these default pads on the, on the V1 between, yeah, the mids and then that craziness going on in the upper mids. At around 4k and the effect of this is that it causes vocals to sound quite lean and strained almost um, and so for vocals this is not th with these default pads it's not particularly good it's a very shouty kind of sound um, lean and shouty is how I would describe this. Now it's interesting though, because I switched this out with the Sundara pads. Well, in fact, I switched it out with all the pads. If you guys are wondering, this is how many pads I, oh, this is how many pads I evaluated it with. And if you're interested in the measurements of the various different pads, um, mostly on the original HE6, because they all kind of do the same thing for each uh, of the different uh, headphones, but I did a number of pad comparisons there with each of them. And I'll leave that up on the headphone community forum and, and a post to that so you can see the frequency response to all that stuff. But actually the best pads that I found um, specifically with the HE6 SEV1 was the Sundara pads. Um, they help kind of uh, curb the upper mids, but then they you know bring up the mid mids as well. Mid mids, the mid mids. Um, and it kind of just balances out a little bit better and, and brings vocals a little bit more uh, with a little bit more of a natural tone there. Uh, and it, it's still a little bit shouty there, but it's uh, with that peak at around 4K, but it's, it's not as bad as it, as it is with these uh, regular uh, default pads. Now, with the rest of the frequency response, you know, for the bass and for the treble, 
it's not bad. Um, the base is totally linear. I would like to see a bit of a base shelf there because I personally like that. But if you're looking for linear base, this sure has it. <laughs> um, and uh, and with the treble as well, it's uh, it's not overdone. Like sometimes you see a lot of planars with crazy treble air, you know, up above 10k. And this doesn't have, this isn't that bad up there at all. This is totally a normal treble response. So apart from that crazy distance there between the mids and the upper mids and lower treble, I guess, um, the, the frequency response here is not not bad at all, and swapping out to the Sundara pads made it uh, quite a bit uh, better, so I would recommend doing that. Um, I'm going to move on to the HE6SE V2 now, and we'll talk about the technical performance and subjective stuff later on. Um, but just with the frequency response here, um, this is quite a bit more balanced there overall for that same range of you know mids to upper mids. It still has the dip there at around 1.5 to 2K, but the distance isn't as extreme there between that region and then the upper mids and lower treble around you know 4K. Uh, so this is quite a bit better sounding, uh, quite smooth as well. And overall, the frequency response here is mostly solid. Um, I do EQ this and I do boost you know 1.5 to 2K to fill that in and add a sub bass shelf. Um, but that's with this one, the, the V2 here, I think that's a little bit more optional. Once again, uh, that's running it with the uh, either the HE400SE pads or the Sundara pads. Um, incidentally, though, they the HE6SE V1 and V2 are using different drivers, or at least it seems that way, um, because... When I was t when I was testing for the air gap behavior, so you know, uh, seeing where the where the driver resonance is, they're both shockingly low, but they're actually lower on the HE6 SEV1, for whatever that matters. And then of course, you know, even though I changed the pads to the same pads, it didn't give me the same frequency response. It was still dramatically different. And if anybody knows kind of how these planars are are designed, um, you know, there, there's not that much else going on with the tuning other than the driver and the pads. One other variable though is that. Again, the V2 version here, uh, Android has done the, the grill mod here and taken the grill off the back. And you can actually do that very easily with these headphones. What I noticed when I did that, because I did test these with without the grill on the back as well. Um, the only measured difference that I found when doing that was a difference to the air gap behavior. And how much that matters is going to depend on the seal that you get with these headphones. So let me try and describe that a little bit. It's a very complicated subject, but in short, the grill apparently has some kind of damping effect there, such that in the lowest part of the sub bass there, you will get a more gradual elevation for the air gap behavior when the grill is on. When you take the grill off, you get a much more pronounced elevation there for the air gap behavior in this in the in the sub bass where that shows up, where the driver resonance shows up. So removing the removing the grill doesn't really change the frequency response in any meaningful way from a tuning standpoint but this is something where it might have some sort of influence there as far as how impactful it sounds with the with the subjective stuff um, now again i i tried it i didn't really hear that much difference but it's tough to take the grill off you know listen put the grill back on listen you know and do this sort of back and forth because the drivers between these two headphones are seemingly different as well so it's not it's not as simple as just going back and forth between the two um, but I, I didn't really hear that much difference because for me, I was getting a seal and so the bass wasn't boosting uh, the way that it might if you weren't getting a seal. So my feeling here is that if you're wearing thick glasses or something like that, then maybe that's where you would notice a change. Um, but uh, you know, apart from that, I don't think you really need to do the, the grill mod. Now, let's talk about the original HE6 here, the six screw HE6. And again, just like with the other two, the the resonance frequency for this headphone is ridiculously low um, and so the bass here is just all the way down like it does not roll off at all <laughs> and then at least with the velour pads here it's uh, mostly linear up until that typical sort of high fm end dip at around 2k and the rest of the frequency response here is solid for the treble like it's a, it's a little uneven there in the mid treble but you know, perceptually it doesn't really seem to bother me all that much it's it's not really it doesn't sound particularly uneven. Um, so I don't really have any issues with the velour pads here. Uh, with the leather pads or pleather pads though, there's quite a pronounced elevation at around 1K, so a little lower than where that uh, that dip is there in the mids. And that has this sort of kind of honk effect to it. Now, in some ways that it's balanced out by the upper treble and, and the rest of the frequency response. But if you, if you listen for it, it's there and enough to where I just think the velour pads sound better. Now, with all of that said, Again, I tried these with so many different pads and 
I have some favorite pads here and I'm gonna let you guys know which ones they are. But with the HE6, the original HE6, uh, it was uh, it was the most interesting and that's in part because the default pads on here are pretty different from the way that hi-fi man's pads are now and so the ones that I actually liked the best and even more than the velour pads here uh, were the Sundara pads the HE 400 SE pads and surprisingly the Sasvara pads uh, Danda when he sent this over he actually sent the Sasvara pads as well and I was actually really surprised to see that the Sundara pads and the Sasvara pads were the closest um, by the way if anybody's wondering I'm, I'm talking about the Sundara 2020 revision pads that are a little bit more bulging there. But essentially what I found with both the Sundara pads and the Sosvara pads is that it kind of helped fill in a little bit of that um, mid-range dip that's there. Not not fully, not completely, but um, it, de it definitely did kind of you know, bring that up a little bit. Adding a little bit more body there again for vocals, which, you know, for me, I, I love that kind of stuff. And then it also had a little bit of a smoother response there in the treble compared to the velour pads, with one exception, and I think it's that in both cases, there's a little bit of a 9K shimmery bump there. But you don't really notice it, or at least it's kind of like the concha interaction area is kind of shifted upwards, and you see that in the graph as well. And it's not like that's good or bad, it's just something to notice because it, it's not enough to you know, be bothersome or pronounce it you know, over other harmonics or anything like that. Um, it was more noticeable on the Sosvara pads, and less on the Sundara and the, and not at all on the HE400 SE. But overall, I, I think any of those three would be the way to go. I think the the Sosvara pads seem to give it a little bit more ear gain there, um, and the Sundara pads are kind of like a middle ground, and the HE400 SE pads are a little more relaxed there in the in various different ranges in the treble. But overall, I think you can't really go wrong with any of those. Uh, but the bottom line here is that the default pads, like the velour pads, are are pretty good, but the Sosvara, Sundara, and HE400 SE pads are better, and all of them are more comfortable than the velour pads here. So. Um, you would be, you know, improving both the comfort and the and the sound um, by going there. But regardless of that, this is not a headphone that needs EQ by any means. It sounds great out of the box. It's just a shame that you can't buy it anymore. But let's talk about the technical performance next. And this is a bit interesting. The technical performance for both the HE6 SE V1 and V2 are pretty much the same. And that's a little bit surprising because at least it looks like they're using different drivers. Uh, but then at the same time, it's maybe not surprising because they, they're they not making the original HE6 anymore. So they're maybe set up a little bit more to do, you know, these. But yeah, the technical performance for both of these is pretty good. Um, I'm going to try and describe it here a little bit. And I think the main point of comparison is going to be with the LCD X uh, from Odyssey. And the reason for that is the 2021 LCD X is also a, you know, decent tuning there. And in some ways I'd kind of consider the tech, its technical performance to be kind of like a, a benchmark there at $1,300 or $1,200 or whatever it comes in at. And keep in mind that these are both currently $1,700. So the difference as I'm going to describe it here is that for micro dynamics and micro detail and trailing ends of tones and clarity for that, the LCD X I think is actually better than both of these. However, for the sense of like speed and immediacy and control and tightness, both of these I think are better than the LCD X or at least as good if not slightly better. Um, they, it just it, it has that sort of snappiness to them, to both of them, that is very enjoyable. When it comes to macro dynamics or that sense of punch and slam and impact, I would actually say that they're very similar with the LCD X, um, and potentially even um, more so. Not like Focal Clear level, not Focal Alex level, uh, but really solid uh, for for a planar magnetic headphone. And for space and stage, I don't find these to be particularly spacious. I actually think the LCD X is more spacious than these, and the Hi-Fi Man Aria is certainly more spacious than both of these. Um, however, the instrument separation on these is also fantastic. You know, when you're listening to music again that has like lots of stuff going on, and there's it's a really busy section of, of the music, you can isolate and pinpoint all the individual different lines really easily with these headphones. And I would, I would honestly say even better than what you get with like an LCD 2. I think, again, the LCD X is a good comparison there. And it's about that same level, um, just with better control and tightness and immediacy with maybe not as good, you know, micro dynamics and micro detail for trailing ends of tones. Um, now, in addition to that, there is this extra sort of sense of intensity and aggressiveness with both of these, especially in contrast with what you get with 
the Hi-Fi Man Aria. Um, the Aria is more of like a softer kind of refined presentation. Same thing with the Ananda. And with these ones, I would just kind of describe these as you know aggressive by by comparison or contrast, but in a way that is engaging and fun, and uh, it's you know it's not harsh or anything like that. It's, it's just like a, a engaging quality that that I can get behind. Um, and the same thing with the original HE6, but we should probably talk about this one next. For all of the nice things about the uh, the other two HE6s here for their technical performance, the original HE6 destroys them. <laughs> um, my God, I was you know when I was doing my evaluation here, I actually had both of the other two in first, and I was kind of comparing them back and forth. I went, yeah, I, I like this. I, I can get into this. It sounds very engaging and fun and lively and you know control and everything and then danda sent this one over he was like oh you're evaluating those he6s i'm gonna send you the og version uh, or at least the six screw and uh boy <laughs> is this ever shockingly good for its technical performance um to the point where this when it originally came out was 1300 dollars, and this is the most detailed headphone most punchy headphone most technically impressive headphone under two thousand dollars that I've heard. This is just ridiculous for its its technical performance, um, to the point where it, it's not really all that close between these other two. I mean, yes, these are these other ones are good sounding. They don't have the haziness or graininess in the mids that lower end planars have. They're not smeared or anything like that for their separation. But this, the HE6, the original, this is on another level. Um, and again, that's why it's such a shame that they're not making this anymore. So this is not so Zavara level detail, but um, easily, this is what headphones under $2,000 should be able to achieve for their technical performance because this sure was able to do it. And when you listen to this and you com you're comparing it to like all the other headphones that I've listened to, um, you know, around this price or, or you know, under $2,000, you know, the Aria, the LCD X, both of these other two, which come in at seventeen hundred dollars, and I know you could get this one at seven hundred or something like that back then. Um, you know, Focal Clear, HD one hundred S, and the Dynamic Driver stuff. Honestly, even the stuff that is more expensive than this. Um, yeah, this is this is better. And actually, I was comparing this against the much more expensive Final Audio D eight thousand Pro. Um, and you know, EQ'd to roughly the same kind of tuning there. And it was ridiculous how close this came to that one. So to the point where like, there were things that I actually liked better about the original HE6. Importantly, for the macro dynamic quality, for the punch and slam, oh my God. <laughs> um, I can't say enough, I can't give enough praise to this headphone for that quality, for that sort of engaging quality and the liveliness and punchiness. And this is the perfect demonstration that Punch and slam and the, the perception of that is not correlated with measured bass response. Because again, if you look at the frequency response here, this actually has lower bass response than a Hi-Fi Man Aria. It has less bass than many other headphones. And in particular, when we're talking about planar magnetic headphones, there are lots that have higher measured bass response. And this punch is harder than every single one of them. Maybe not the LCD4, but I'd have to have those side by side. Um, because this is absolutely a punchy, intense, engaging sounding headphone. If you think about it, it's kind of crazy. Like a lot of headphones have come out since this and Hi-Fi Men have done refinements to their headphones, to their drivers, and they've done the sort of massive elongated cups on the Aria and the Ananda. Um, and while they've achieved different new and different and interesting things with those headphones, when it comes to, you know, uh, being able to drive the, you can drive the Ananda with just about anything. You know, with, with those headphones, you get more depth and space and stage and all that stuff. Sure. And the frequency response, I would say, is more refined as well. A little bit. But what they gave up in doing so was the intensity that you get with the, the original HE6 here. And it's, it's, I mean, yeah, I know they have a little bit of that in these other two, but not on this level. So, you know, the original HE6, while not as ridiculously crazy for all the technical performance as the Sazvara and, you know, the LCD4 and... You know, some of those other ridiculous, you know, detailed headphones at the $4,000 plus mark or, you know, $5,000 or like some of the Abyss stuff. The overall sound quality here and the experience that I get from this is up there with some of the very best in the world. And it does so at a fraction of the price. Well, I say a fraction, it's still an expensive headphone, but it does so at a much more modest price tag. And to me, that indicates that, you know, if you could do this at $1,300, you know, you can do it again. And I'm waiting for somebody to come along and do that. 
uh, because it's a really, and that's kind of going to be the conclusion here, is that it's a real shame that the HE6 is no longer available for purchase. And as much as these other two are interesting, they kind of don't really, they don't hold a candle to the original. Um, or at least, yeah, there's a familiarity with, with all of these in the sense that they kind of have a similar presentation and a similar sound, but, you know, they're not as good as the original, uh, at least in my opinion. So again, ranking them in, in order of, you know, sonic preference here for me, because again, this is all just, uh, this is one man's opinion. This seem, seems like people don't realize that I'm, I'm just a guy. In third place is the uh, HE6 SEV1. And close to that is, uh, in second place, is the uh, HE6 SE V2. And then several steps above that is the original HE6. Um, man, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm sad that has to go back. <laughs> I've had some constructive feedback here for Hi-Fi Man. It would be to ditch this headband here, the, uh, the Sundara headband. Um, I think the pads aren't as bad if you were to have uh, cup swivel. I think they would actually be decently comfortable. But the problem is that the tuning with these pads is a bit uh, a bit too crazy there in the mids and upper mids. And so I would just put the regular, like the current version Sundara pads or the 400 SE pads on the, the SE V1. That would be sort of my constructive feedback there because the stuff that was done for the version 2 here, um, that... It, it is actually an improvement in my opinion. And then while I think that the original HE6 was probably priced a little bit too low, <laughs> uh, keeping in mind that this came out in you know 2011, you know, I, c I could see both of these being priced somewhere in between, like maybe 1500, 1300, you know, a little closer to the LCD X, because really I think that's kind of what it's competing with. And at $1,700, it's just a bit of a stretch to me. Anyways, that does it for this video. Thanks for taking the time to watch it, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.